These are all of the parts for the Camerodactyl Master System um, modular photo processor. Some of them you have to make many, many times. It also includes the parts for the cassette over here and the parts for a 4-inch darkroom reel to be used in a 5-gallon bucket. Um, it has the roll paper loader over here and well, well we'll get into each one and what all of my settings are to print uh, all of them first let's take a look at the file pack so the file pack is uh, organized like this um, this is the photo processor I've grouped them by the type of slicing and material that I'm going to use uh, group them by printing rules if you will um, so I have uh, 0 0.2 millimeter standard PLA. This is a slicing profile that we'll see later from um, over over here in these standard bamboo presets uh, of today, June 29th, 2025, uh, whatever, whatever version of Bamboo Studio this is, but printing technology will always get better. Each print profile for what material, what uh, infill percentage and number of wall loops and whether or not it uses support and what type of support are grouped over here. Um, secondarily, there are these other uh, extra files for four inch reels, which are then grouped as well. These are only printed one way. Um, for the uh, cassette itself, these are printed two different ways. Um, we'll get back to the cassette in a second. And then for the roll feeder assembly. Further down you'll find a few folders here which are uh, multi-STL components. This is actually a hard one to see, but let's look at... Well, we'll go back to the cassette. We'll look at the bottom of the cassette. So the graphics are these. I don't know if you can see here. And then the cassette bottom itself is here and it has the cutouts and those are matching so like when I load them in bamboo slicer I have two STLs that nest I'm just going to let's let's just for the fun of it load these two um, STLs together into the slicer and every time I pick multiple items it asks me if I want to load these files as a single object with multiple parts usually uh, I click no, but this is one object, right, with, with different nesting parts. So I click yes, and now it gives me um, these two objects. And so if I look over here at the plate information, this object has sub-objects. And so I can isolate the graphics or just the object itself. And I take the graphics and I'm going to change them to 2, which is white PLA. And then I can uh, lay this on its bottom. Back to the file structure for a second. Yeah, within the, the file structure you have the roll feeder, the cassette, and the um, four inch reels, and then also each of the slicing profiles. So we're going to come back here and take a look at these guys. Um, where does plate one start? Oh boy. Looking at how these are laid out plate 1 through plate 7 can be printed in standard PLA. And so if we look at all of these plates, these are the files that come from, let's see here. Okay, so these are the files here on plate 1 through 7 that come from this, oops, that, yep this first 0.2 millimeter standard PLA. These are all of the STLs you see laid out here. Um, let's look at plate one. Pretty simple. The only thing you gotta do is lay them out like this, or if you're using bamboo slicer, I'm going to include you know this file with everything laid out nicely, but this is all number one, set to generic PLA the global presets for this slice is um, basically uh, 0.2 millimeter standard PBLX1C. That's, that's, uh, that's the thing. A lot of these components necessarily are part of the uh, light baffling system 
for the processor. They, they keep it dark, so no uh, clear, obviously, but a lot of filaments glow. And so most of these I would recommend uh, that you print them in a dark gray or a black. It tends to have more uh, light blocking abilities. Some of these components can have a colored top, so I often print the tops of these components with a color. Uh, you can do that. I'll just quickly select this object and um, give it a color by uh, height range. Um, and then just boop, maybe, maybe I'll give it a 0 0.6, 0 0.5, that's good. Boop. Um, I make sure that there is one layer in here, at least, of black or gray, whatever you're printing in, but then you can print this top in white or light blue, red, whatever. Anyway, uh, that's how I have the colored tops for a lot of these processors, is just through the bamboo painting. Um, it's not a separate graphic in the same way that I made the graphics for these cans, and later on we'll see some of the graphics in the roll feeder. We're not going to go through right now what all of these parts are. We will look at them um, with our with our real uh, eyes and hands and look at the actual parts when we assemble them, and we'll talk about what they do. It'll be a little bit easier than just looking through you know, random geometries right now in, in computer land. Okay, so plates 9 through plate 18 over here. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I miss one. Anyway, 9 through 18. Um, all of those plates are no support carbon fiber PETG. Um, now, uh, it needs to be PETG in a lot of these components because of its higher melting temperature. Um, a lot of these are drier components, but also a lot of these components uh, are necessarily uh, PETG because of temperature, and they need carbon fiber because of um, light resistance. PETG tends to have a more uh, translucent printed appearance with the non-carbon fiber uh, variants, and so um, the carbon fiber ones have plenty of filament. They're very nice and dark. So um, all of these, it's important to print them in carbon fiber PETG. Now, you can get away with just regular standard PLA, not even doing it uh, by strength, but I would highly recommend, uh, if you're going to take all of the time and spend all of the money to do this, you know, just print them in some nice carbon fiber PETG dash CF, carbon fiber filled. Um, and the bamboo brand is great. Um, I use a couple of different colors, and we'll see why during the assembly. Um, I coated that in here, so this is the dryer lid. Um, that's, you know, a black, uh, light proof thing. And then I coated the left hand and right hand rollers, uh, in different colors. So this is, these are bamboo available colors, green and blue, PETG, CF. And so there's a little bit of a logic when you assemble them to which is green and which is blue, and you can obviously make any color scheme you want. But um, when you have six or seven modules, each with six rollers and a couple of these components, um, it really starts to become advantageous to be able to look at, at a glance and tell the difference between this roller and this roller. Somehow I had auto-flipped some of these things, and uh, to be clear, this is the orientation of these rollers. Um, okay, then we have some dryer exit face parts over here. This is part of the motor mount. I'm actually using carbon fiber to add to the strength, but also the light baffle portion of the motor mount up here. Um, here is exposed to the processor, so it's nice to keep that light tight. And uh, for chemical resistance and just strength and durability over time, this really pays off to make it out of carbon fiber um, PET-G. I 
now only make them like that. But I have made them in PLA, and I've only had problems with the PLA one. This is the face plate over here, the uh, abacus bead coupler for all of the drive shafts of the clusters. This is a roller cluster over here, lighter so we could see it better maybe. Yeah, okay. Um, these are the pillow blocks for the drive shaft. Here's another abacus bead coupler. Oh, this one that I said was a coupler is actually not drive coupler for the motor. Yep, and we can see on the back side that this is a different component. This uh, screws to the RC, <laughs> RC wheel hub connector uh, to the motor in here. So for plates 9 through 18, here's the slicing profiles, right? I have it as set to bamboo PETGCF. I'm using their in-brand um, refills. It's, it's a very nice plastic. It's really worth it for me. The preset is 0 0.2 millimeter strength. That's their preset. Um, and that's it. <laughs> that's how you print those objects. Cool. Now, um, the next couple... Here we have the uh, tub, right? This is the each unit of the processor tub, and this is the dryer version of that. Um, this is a one-piece version of this guy and this guy, and it has to be printed uh, along with the dryer cluster with support. Oops, all of these are objects that require support, requires two component printing to get a really nice smooth job. You could you could do it with one filament printing, I'm sure, with a clippers and a sanders and a file, yada yada, but this really is where uh, the bamboo kind of shine shown did for shine where the bamboo really shines for me is uh, being able to print some structures with some crazy overhang sometimes and get away with it. Uh, I guess you could have done this in a more multi-part sort of way. You know, this is the dryer cluster, obviously. It needs some support from here to here. This uh, one-piece dryer adapter has support only around the edge here. The tub, the tub here, only uses some support um, within this hole for the overflow, and this dryer tub uses support in the same way for these much larger um, air outflow ports. Let's just take a look at how I set up that support. So I'm going to go to support, enable support. I'm gonna go, let's, let's look at this tub as an example. Um, the important part, I use a lot of these defaults, unless it gives me a reason not to. Um, the support raft interface, I want to set that to... Oh, I click up in this plus to generate a new uh, profile, and then I want uh, bamboo support PA. Yeah, and I'm gonna make this. Well, we'll just make it. This kind of, I want to make this into support PA. Yes, and it's a really good support material. Um, it. You don't use a lot of it, but it breaks away from this carbon fiber PETG, which is important. So let's just look at one slice of this guy and how the support looks. So, um, yep, it's just got this breakaway support at this layer and right on top of the bottom layer there. That'll be important. Also, these tubs are interlocking and there's a lip up here. And so we have a little bit of support material uh, right there. And let's just take a look at um, how boop, 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 boop. Um, let's just take a look at how the dryer will look. The dryer box. Right. Again, we've got this lip here with the support, and then we've got these uh, supports here for the dryer outputs and obviously a purge block. That's how to print all the carbon fiber PETG prints that use support and uh, how I set it up. Um, okay, on to the next one.
Okay, one thing that I did not say before, which future Ethan cut this in to the beginning of this segment, um, the original PLA print, I print uh, with the profile of Bamboo X1C and a textured PEI plate with no treatment to the plate. The PETG and PETG carbon um, prints, I use the engineering plate and is the engineering plate. On this plate, I like to use a uh, spray of Aquanet. You should not do this next to your computer. Good. And when that dries, that's going to give the print something to stick to, but also a micro layer to shear and remove by flexing the plate when we uh, take the print off the printer. Okay, the next plate we're looking at in the um, processor components is the uh, PETG frame tub and uh, paper guides. These guys are made out of any old PETG, although this section is part of the light baffle component of the processor, so I would print this in black, at least in those process steps that um, need to be light tight. In the dryer tank, this could be, let's say, a orange uh, PETG, but I made this orange so that we could see it here. I also print this on the engineering plate and also use Aquanet. Uh, this this brand Aquanet is great for 3D printing. Okay, now we're looking at the roll feeder components. These are printed out of PLA and should be um, on the textured PEI plate and I'm printing them for strength. Okay, this housing is actually two STLs. They came in a, a file together. It's the roll feed body and the indicator mark, which is in red PLA, or you can make it whatever color you would like. Plate 28 is some indicators and uh, lock buttons. They can be printed in any color. I print them for strength in PLA. Um, plate 27 is the inner cores for uh, the master system four inch roll paper cassettes. There are also the 35 millimeter feed cartridges for uh, loading black and white or color film into the processor, so we'll need to make some of these. These are made out of regular standard uh, PLA, but I use standard start modify values, and then we're going to enable support. And this support, we're just going to use any PETG. We can take a look at what that looks like when it's sliced. Basically, the only spot you're going to see it is this indentation here, this mat of orange uh, PETG. And then the rest is uh, PLA support. Anyway, um, you can print these heavy duty or light duty. It doesn't matter. This, uh, this cassette opening tool wrench and this cassette lock button can be printed with no support at standard PLA uh, printing. Same deal with the 4-inch roll paper canisters, uh, but those are multi-material print. The front and rear knobs and uh, faceplate of the roll paper mechanism here and um, and here are multi-material prints. Uh, I print them in green, red, or green, blue, and white with a gray or black body. 